Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and I'm kind of in the middle of nowhere. I mean, I really am in the middle of nowhere. This is uh, Sierraville, which uh, I don't know what the population is, but it's pretty small. But it does have a cafe with internet access, which is very important because it's what's going to enable me to actually upload this video. I have been completely incommunicado for the last few days. Uh, this part of the world doesn't get me cell phone reception. Um, I had to walk like a mile to get even crappy internet access. <laughs> like, actually, I was technically able to get internet access from my cabin, but uh, it had a ping time of about 900 milliseconds with 70% packet loss, which is possibly the worst I've ever seen in my entire life. But uh, I do think it's important to continue making videos and today's subject is going to be solid rocket boosters and how they are steered and how they are guided because uh, when I posted my Delta 3 video somebody uh, responded saying oh you've got this all wrong because the Delta 3 didn't use a you know rotating nozzle and I'm going to say first of all actually every single reference I've seen tells us that it used a, uh, an actuated nozzle that is a nozzle that physically moved from one side to the other. But there is another way to steer solid rocket boosters, solid rocket engines. And this is very important if you're, say, building an ICBM, right? Because your ICBMs, you want these to use cheap, storable uh, propellants. So solid rocket boosters are great. Uh, so the Minuteman, it uses something called liquid injection thrust vector control. What that means is around the interior of the nozzle, they have these little input ports and they can squirt in dinitrogen tetroxide, which is a powerful oxidizer. So that increases the rate at which the propellant burns, creates a hot spot, creates a higher pressure, and therefore it causes the rocket to steer. This means it doesn't need any moving parts. And that's great. The, of course, the Minuteman is an ICBM. You want it to be able to hit a target a long way away with great accuracy. So of course it needs steering, right? So that's the first stage. The second and second and later stages will have similar stuff. There's one other important thing that the Minuteman and other ICBMs added, and that's called thrust termination ports. So as you know, solid rocket motors, once you light them, they won't stop burning. They will continue to provide thrust. And if you are trying to lob a warhead onto a target, then you probably want the thrust to terminate at a specific moment when your object is on a ballistic projectile to land on the target. So the Minuteman, and I presume many others, include thrust termination ports. And what these are is they're, uh, they're essentially doors that blow open at the right moment. And that means the nozzle breaks and some of the thrust is diverted forwards. And once that happens, that stops the thrust. In fact, thrust termination ports are typically designed so that they generate a, lit a little bit of reverse thrust. The reason being, of course, that your final stage with your multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicles, uh, you want that to be pulled away from the booster. So when this fires, when the thrust termination ports open, they uh, end up, you know, pulling the booster away from the target and, or away from the upper stage and, you know, it then continues on its way. And it usually will have liquid engines providing, uh, you know, terminal guidance, basically enough to put each warhead onto its target accurately. So anyway, yeah, back to the uh, thrust vectoring on solid rocket boosters. One of the things that was used is uh, dinitrogen tetroxide. Another thing I've heard used, which is interesting, is strontium percolate, which can be made dissolved in an aqueous solution. And that's an even more powerful oxidizer. I believe that's actually used by the uh, Indian, the ISRO, um, PSLV, and GSLV. They use uh, solid rocket motors. Uh, let me see, uh, the Titan 3C, if you remember, it lit both the solid rocket boosters on the ground and l only later would ignite the uh, central liquid engine. And again, it would use dinitrogen tetroxide injection uh, to get it steering. It wouldn't have a movable nozzle. So that is, you know, that is rough way that solid rocket boosters steer. The other way, of course, as I mentioned, like in the space shuttle, they have these actuating nozzles which are driven by hydraulics. That's totally a totally valid option. So, 
yeah, I uh, hope that clears things up. I, hopefully I find a place where I can get a decent internet connection. Until then, this is Scott Manley in Sierraville. Fly safe. <laughs>